Hey guys, Gabe Soares here. Okay, um, so um, there were a couple of questions, uh, actually at the Georgia Force on Force class, and uh, you know, and then also on, on Patreon, uh, you know, in regards to uh, carry and concealment and whatnot. Look, I, I've written a lot and I've talked a lot about um, the the reality of the street as opposed to the perceptions of the shooting range. Okay, it's not about speed; it's about timing. Uh, you know, there's there's a whole culture in the gun community that focuses on speed. They got timers, you know, and everything has to be lickety fucking split and and everything else. And I think that that's a mistake. Yeah, we don't want to be slow pokes, um, but the the focus on being the fastest guy, I think, is is uh, ill placed. I think that you have to be you have to be smooth uh, rather than herky jerky. Smoothness will automatically make you a little bit faster or quicker, I should say. Uh, smoothness comes from repetitive action, doing something over and over and over and over. Okay, so I would rather have a a, a, a very smooth, fumble proof draw in a second and a half. Than a one second draw that you know 90% of the time it's on the other 10% of the time eh, you know so something something that is predictable and reliable rather than not is is the most important I mean, yeah granted if you can be super smooth always have a one second draw under any conditions concealed whatever great fantastic but what I'm saying is that you should seek smoothness uh, and reliability rather than speed speed comes in and of itself. Now, the other thing is this, uh, in the street, uh, it's not about how fast you are, it's how good your timing is, okay? Um, you, and that has to do, I did a whole podcast on that, I don't want to revisit everything, go and read that other, or listen to that other podcast, it'll tell you what I, I think is important about speed and timing. Timing is essential, timing is what wins fights. Now, one of the things about timing uh, has to do with with your your draw. It doesn't always have to be super fast. There is a place for what I call the covert draw or the surreptitious draw. Okay, where is that? Well, there have been events that I am aware of personally where uh, you know the the bad guys have the upper hand. Okay, and you know uh, there's sort sort of a stalemate going on and. Uh, you know, it could be an armed robbery thing. It could be, you know, a, a, any sort of a stalemate situation where any sort of a fast movement is going to be met with violence, okay? But a, a more surreptitious uh, presentation uh, probably will go unseen. And then once you have the pistol in your hand, you can make things happen, okay? Now, um, the, the thing about uh, appendix carry is that in a public place, I can simply be standing like this. Now, right now, the, the the CZ pistol is under my right forearm, and the spare magazine is under my left forearm. So people can come up, you know, touch the back of my waist, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. There's nothing there. Okay, I can do the same by doing this. Okay, hands in my pockets, um, you know, and and this basically protects this, and this protects this. And what I'm talking about is is this guy right here. Okay. All right, now um, the the surreptitious draw, okay, traditional strong side draw. Now look at the motions of, of the arms, okay. All right, this is what it, it ends up looking like, okay. Any bad guy that's looking at the line of your shoulders, they see this displacement going on, they're going to know what time it is, okay. On the other hand, okay, a surreptitious draw to the appendix carry is very simple without a lot of shoulder displacement, okay? Right now my hand is on my pistol, my shoulders haven't displaced very much, okay? So if I'm in a crowd, there's other people in front of me and this area is, uh, is concealed, I can pretty much access this and have this pistol in my hand without any shoulder line displacement. You saw that, okay? Additional things that you can do, all right? Um, you know, just a, a, a brief turning away, you know, again, um, very little shoulder displacement, and now I've got pistol in hand. Okay, the pistol doesn't always have to be drawn to a ready position like you see in basic gun school. There's a place for drawing and concealing behind the leg, concealing under the arm, you know, or basically just having it here at the waistband. As long as your trigger finger is off the trigger, it's perfectly safe. Okay, there's also a place for um, 
<coughs> dissimulation. In other words, um, grabbing the attention of the other party. Uh, I read an article years ago that uh, uh, Fairbairn, you guys will remember him, he, he was the guy that was tasked with taking basically knuckleheads that were not going to be dedicated to training or development or anything else and within an hour show them how to use a 1911 or a revolver or whatever in an effective manner, okay? Some people today, they think, oh yeah, that's the way. No, that's if you're an illiterate knucklehead in Southeast Asia that doesn't know how to fucking read, okay, and is going to spend his time chasing women, digging rice or whatever. If you're a first world person and if you have a phone and you're watching this or whatever, you are one of those people, you can expand your knowledge base considerably, okay? You're an intelligent person. You don't use an abacus to figure out your monthly bills, okay? You don't need the Fairbairn system today, okay? But back then, anyway, I digress. Fairbairn, um, he did a study in sleight of hand. In other words, how to attract someone's attention and point it somewhere else. Um, you know, and it's, it's, I, I have the article somewhere. I need to find it. Uh, it might even still be online. But it had to do with him talking to someone and gazing at different locations and so on. You know, uh, there, was a, there was another study that was done by a psychology class that I recall. There was a, a, a student that was standing on a street corner looking up like this at particularly nothing, okay? And what would happen is that other people would walk up and they would look up at what he was looking, okay? So he, in essence, caught their attention and forced them to do what he wanted um, without them even realizing. And so you can do the same thing, you know, with your hands when you're talking. You can direct things. Um, you know, you can, you can, for example, you know, like talking like this or whatever, showing them something, and in the, in the meantime, you can produce the pistol under the level of their gaze. So these are all things that you should study in regard to the surreptitious draw because there may come a time when it's important to you. It's not always about a fast draw. It's never about drawing to some goofy ready position. It's always about getting your weapon into the fight in a timely manner with good timing. Okay? Anyway, that's it. Gabe Suarez, and uh, I'll see you again soon.